Hello friends, welcome back to Indo Tales from Life. Thanks to all the positive reviews for our previous product review video which encourages us to do more videos. In this video we are going to review Valflex Nitec Gold Rotary Files from Valdent and we acknowledge the team Dental Card for providing the sample for doing this video and we also disclaim that we do not have any financial interest towards the company or the product shown in this video. So this is how we receive the sample. This is a sorted box and apart from the initial starter pack, the files are also available as individual sizes. And in this assorted pack, they have the sizes now W1 to W6, which is nothing but a 17.8%, which is the orifice shaper, 19.2% for rotary glide path, 24%, 26%, 24%, and 26%. So, additionally, something that stood out in the packaging is the box itself had an endo ruler, which can be used for measuring working length and also for measuring the master cone, etc. So, this I feel will be really useful clinically. And whenever I receive a new file, this is one thing that I do, the pre-bendability test because all these heat treated files have this property which is very useful in areas with limited mouth opening or restricted access. And this file was nicely pre-bendable and it did not have much of shape memory. So I thought the best way to clinically evaluate this file is to do some clinical demonstration rather than just talking about the file or showing how it's used on a simulated canal or an actually block. So here we are going to see three molars treated with this particular set of files. Yes, we are going to use it for three molars after autoclaving, autoclaving and you'll be seeing how the files are going to perform. So this is situation number one. This is the first case that I did, uh, mandibular 4.6 which with a lesion which had a crack uh, which did not extend till the pulp chamber so which can still be saved with root canal and upon initial access this is what we found and in this particular demonstration I did not use any hand files because that would be the best uh, uh, rugged way to evaluate the efficiency of the file. So I just located the canal orifices with the DG16 Following which, we are going to use the orifice shaper. So, I am first using it in the mesolingual canal. You can immediately see the pus discharge from the canal. We wipe the file, clear the flutes, and then go to the next canal, the distal canal. not overdoing it, just brushing in the coronal third. After coronal enlargement, we do ultrasonic irrigation. And this is the primary preliminary axis and following which we are going to use the subsequent files but we will never use the file dry in the canal so we have placed a lot of irrigant as a reservoir which will act as a lubricant and also reduce the frictional fatigue. The next file that we are going to use is the glide path, rotary glide path file which is a 19.2% file. And here, since we do not use manual K files for working in determination, I've just attached the Apex Locator's file holder to the rotary file so that we can determine working length and also have adequate length control during rotary instrumentation. This is not an integrated endo motor with Apex Locator. Here, just an independent apex locator is connected to the endo motor during rotation. And after each step, we are going to do a lot of irrigation and agitation. 
which I will not be showing repeatedly in this video. So you can see we are doing uh, copious irrigation. and agitation with the air sonics here and following this we are going to use a 2004 file Again, the file is connected to the apex locator to have length control. So, after each canal, remember to wipe off the debris in the file. And now, after 2004, we again irrigate and agitate. And following this, we are going to use the 2006. The file you can see has a pretty good cutting efficiency going to the triangular cross section. And it, it is pretty easy to reach the working length. And now I'm going to instrument one of the most difficult to access canals, which is the mesio buckle when you're wor working on the right lower quadrant. So you can see I pre-bent the file to easily place it into the canal. And after shaping the main canals, we always confirm if there are any extra canals. And upon slight deroofing here, you can see there is an additional distal canal which will also be enlarged in the same manner. Starting with an orifice shaper and finishing with a 2006. So in the end we again irrigate, agitate, this is done patiently for each canal plenty of times and finally once the canal is clean for obturation we use the same 2006 GP corresponding to the last file that we used. This is the master cone and this is the final post operator radiograph. You can see some sealer extrusion which was not intentional, which is not advocated, but it is bound to happen as in bioceramic obturation technique at times, especially in cases with lesions where there is a well established patency. And this crack tooth was later restored with the bonded restoration. And case number two is again a necrotic tooth. With a periapical lesion, the patient reported with acute swelling. There's a left maxillary second molar, which was also treated in the same manner with the four files. This was the second use of this particular set of rotary files. And you can see this, this tooth was little more curved than the first canal. You can see the nice curve in the distrobuckle canal. And then we had case number three which is the third use of the same files and this was a pretty uh, tough tooth for the uh, files to be evaluated because you can see the pulp chamber nicely constricted and the canals are curved you do not see the patency in the distal canal beyond the middle third so upon initial access this was a case with acute pulpitis you can see the amount of bleeding so ultrasonics are used to wash off the coronal pulp tissue in the pulp chamber
and the same instrument sequence is used in this particular tooth as well we are just following the manufacturer's recommendation we did not skip any file and this is going to be the present and future of instrumentation where we are slowly saying goodbye to manual glide path so in this tooth again we are not using any K files the coronal enlargement is done with orify shaper irrigation agitation will be performed again 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 after every rotary file usage now we can see there is another distal canal which will also be enlarged with this orifice shaper now following this the same instrumentation sequence will be followed all the four files will be used we are not going to show you the use of every file here but there is a slight difference in the endomotor that we are used in this particular case here this is an endomotor with an inbuilt apex locator which has an integrated endomotor and apex locator mode so the working length can be established even during rotary instrumentation this feature makes it easy to do this technique where there are no hand files used and no working length radiographs taken but still we have a pretty good length control during rotary instrumentation as the apex locator works continuously during instrumentation and after debriding the canal as well You can see in a nice clean canals and the pulp chamber beautifully cleaned. Same 2006 GP is going to be used here as well. This is a master cone, and in mandibular second molars, we need to be really careful with your length control because we may have the uh, mandibular canal which is very close to the periapical region of the tooth we cannot overshoot here so with a controlled obturation technique we made sure nothing went beyond and you can see though this is not a highly curved canal but it has a tough tooth and for a file that is being used for the third time without fracture it's a pretty uh, difficult case you can see the curve in multiplanar multiplanes and you can see a nice acute curve in the distal canal so after three uses now let us critically analyze the good things about the file and the limitations if any that I find so let us begin with the good things that I like about the system is uh, there is always a debate between 4% and 6% but the assorted pack itself is in such a way that a uh, clinician can stop with 24% or 25-4% they can just do with a 4% uh, system as well or if people want a 6% to end it also gives a flexibility for example the same tooth if I am going to stop or prepare a mesio buccal first canal in a maxillary molar to a 6% the second MB2 I can still stop to a 24 so the system is more versatile in terms of sizes there are also more number of sizes available like 4% and 6% in every tip size ranging till 40 like I mentioned also an easy to follow sequence for beginners in the assorted or the starter pack and this is the picture of the files that has been used for three cases three molars and in total 11 canals you can see the file is not deform much so it explains the longevity of the files as well which is a very important aspect in this part of the world and 
I particularly like the orifice shaper because a lot of uh, orifice shapers generally are too thin the tip and they can easily break but this was this had a good combination of flexibility and stiffness which was very easier to locate the canals uh, or to penetrate canals that are just located with the DG16 and the best part uh, again is the cost this is pretty economical and much friendly to the pocket and additionally there are also glide path rotary glide path files available and I'm personally not a big fan of rotary glide path files which are uh, available in, in a very thin tip size because when the tip size is too thin they are more prone to fracture due to torsional fatigue but if there are lovers for uh, thin rotary glide path files yes they do have that as well and now if there are anything negative with the file I would like to pinpoint this which is the color coding for the 1902 that is a rotary glide path file and the 2004 is the same both has a single yellow ring and the numbers are not engraved on the shaft as well so for an experienced clinician maybe they could easily differentiate with by the thickness of the file the 4% file is more thicker and fatter but for a beginner this might be a little confusing to identify or differentiate between these two files and apart from that I couldn't find anything greatly negative uh, in the short span that I've used.